and gentlemen, welcome back to another video in the Road to Russia series on the channel. So, tomorrow we've got Gareth Southgate announcing his 23-man squad, quite prematurely in my opinion. So, we have to do a prediction. We've, we've done maybe one, two predictions on the channel in the last sort of year, and we have our final prediction to make today before Gareth Southgate announces his actual squad tomorrow. So, let's get straight into business here. I have pretty much outlined 35 players that I think that Gareth Southgate will be looking, sort of looking within this pool to make his final selection of that 23-man squad that will be on that plane to Russia. So we're going to start with the goalkeepers now and who I predict to be on that plane. So Jack Butland, Jordan Pickford, Nick Pope and Joe Hart in the last six months have been the only keepers really anywhere near that number one jersey for England. You've also got players like McCarthy, Forster, maybe Heaton who are fit and have featured at points in the season but I don't think those three are really anywhere near. Then you've also got Ben Foster who I believe is retired so I don't think he'll be anywhere near either but I do believe that it's going to be Butland, Pickford and Nick Pope that are going to be the three keepers that get on that plane to Russia for England. Purely because Joe Hart, it came out today on the news that he will not be, apparently, in Gareth Southgate's squad. So he might be on standby. I'm not quite sure whether he's just completely out of the picture. But apparently he's not there at all. So he's not, in the, he's not really in the plans. And so that makes it pretty obvious to me that Butland... Pickford and Pope are going to be the three keepers that get on that plane. So if we move on to the defenders now, we're going to start off with the right backs here. So we've got Kieran Trippier, Trent Alexander-Arnold and Carl Walker, who I've put down as the right backs slash right wing backs on this list. Now, I do believe that Trent Alexander-Arnold going into a Champions League final, being the young player of the year for Liverpool, he will be hugely unlucky to miss out on a place should he not get a seat on the plane. I, I'm not actually predicting him to get a seat on the plane. I am going to go with Kieran Trippier and Carl Walker, but it could very well be that Carl Walker is technically considered as a centre-back for Southgate in his sort of 5-3 at the back system because obviously he did play in the last friendlies in that right centre-back role because of his passing and his pace out the back and all that kind of stuff. So it could very well be that Trippier, Alexander-Arnold and Walker all go to the World Cup. I don't think Klein's had quite enough football to be considered. So I think Alexander-Arnold will be ahead of him in the pecking order. But for now, I'm going to predict that Trippier gets on the plane, as does Walker. And I'll kind of explain a little bit why I think Alexander-Arnold might miss out a little bit later. But he, like I said, he will be very, very unlucky to miss out. Moving on to the centre-backs, we've got Keane, Stones, Jones, Cahill, Tarkovsky and Maguire who I believe are going to be the five or six that are in contention for, for a place on the plane. So Michael Keane, I, maybe a few weeks ago, I wouldn't have put him in this conversation at all. I probably would have put someone like Mawson, uh, even Smalling ahead of him. But I don't think that he's played too badly recently. He's been quite decent for Everton in their OK end of the season. And yeah, he's just been a little bit more consistent at the end of the season than he maybe was at the beginning of the season. So he's definitely in contention. But my first name on the plane for centre-back is going to be Phil Jones. I believe that he's been pretty much one of the main selections for Mourinho in a very, very good defensive season for Manchester United. He's had a couple of injury problems here and there, but he's fit now. So I'm going to go Phil Jones to get a seat on the plane. Now, John Stones as well. I think obviously he's just won the title with Manchester City. He may be falling a little bit out of favour uh, under Pep Guardiola recently, but I think he's one of Gareth Southgate's favourite defenders. Really, really epitomises what Gareth Southgate's style is all about. Playing out from the back, dribbling out from the back. And so I think John Stones will be on that plane. Now you're looking at Cahill, Tarkovsky, Maguire and Keane. So I'm going to draw Keane out of the picture here. I don't think he'll quite have enough to get on the plane. So I'm looking at Cahill, Tarkovsky and Maguire. And like I said, you don't know how many players in each position are going to get seats. So I think probably the most likely scenario, because of Eric Dyer, because of Kyle Walker's versatility, I think that he's only going to take two of these three. And it's very, very difficult to decipher which of these three will get on that plane. So I'm going to draw Gary Cahill out of it now. He's been playing a little bit for Chelsea recently. He's obviously vastly experienced uh, for England. He's quite a mature centre-back. He would be a good voice on the pitch, but I don't think his form's been good enough this season. And, and clearly by players like Joe Hart missing out, it's clear that Gareth Southgate wants to go with the young uns and, you know, build experience for the future, probably take a quarter-final exit at this tournament. So, in that case then, I'm going to go for Tarkovsky and Maguire to get seats on the plane. And now we have to move on to the left-backs, because I'm not including any more uh, centre-backs in the squad. So we've got Rose... 
Bertrand Young. I've also put Sessegnon on there. I know he's been playing left wing mainly recently, and I know he hasn't been selected yet in a senior England squad. But I have to put him in there for, for consideration because his form just cannot be ignored. Had a really good game in the playoff semi-final yesterday as well. And also you've got Fabian Delph, who is a sort of centre midfielder come left back who's been a bit of a sort of versatility man, utility man for Pep Guardiola's Manchester City in a title winning season. So he has to be considered a left back as well. I think that if all left backs are fit, Danny Rose starts pretty much every time under Gareth Southgate at left back slash left wing back. So Danny Rose gets a seat for me on the plane. Bertrand also very good centre back, uh, sorry, left back, but for Southampton hasn't had a magnificent season. Obviously they just narrowly avoided relegation on the sort of penultimate day of the season. And so I think Ashley Young is gonna go ahead of Ryan Bertrand in the pecking order for left back slash left wing back. He can also play right back, right wing back, which is, like I said earlier, probably another reason for Trent maybe not getting a seat on the plane. So Ashley Young is the sort of effectively second left back behind Rose for me. And I wouldn't be surprised if he started ahead of him, by the way, because he is he has had a very solid season and he is a very good attacking sort of option at left back or left wing back. Ryan Sessegnon, I think, will miss out. Ryan Bertrand will be very, very, very unlucky to miss out. He's been a mainstay for the last maybe four or five years with England. He's always been in the conversation for left backs. He still is, but I think he's just going to miss out this time. And now moving on to the midfielders, I'm not going to ignore Fabian Delph. And in fact, I do think that Delph will get a seat on the plane as a sort of versatile player. I don't think he'll see much game time, but you know, if there's an injury to someone or something like that, I think Fabian Delph may come on and get some time. So I think he's gonna be on the plane. So Fabian Delph gets my first midfield selection, mainly due to his versatility. And obviously he's gonna have a good mentality having just come off the back of a title winning season. He's been in Guardiola's plans. So there's no reason why Delph shouldn't go really. I think he will. Eric Dyer then I think also will make the plane just because he's a versatile defensive midfielder, center back. He's also been in the conversation to be England captain. So I think he's pretty much a dead sir for England. Now we move on to a little bit of a different bracket of players. Jordan Henderson, John Joe Shelby, Jake Livermore, and Lewis Cook. I would consider these four the more sort of defensive midfielders, maybe with the exception of Shelby, who does often look forward for a pass on many occasions. But yeah, generally speaking, these are more deep lying midfielders and Dyer as well, but I think he's already just nailed on because of his versatility. But yeah, Jordan Henderson, let's start with him. I absolutely think that he will be England captain going into this tournament. He's going into a Champions League final as captain with Liverpool. He's been in the England setup for years and years, and he does offer a very sort of engine role in the midfield, you know, sweeping things up, looking for passes. I think Jordan Henderson will be our captain going into this tournament, and I think he's pretty much a dead sir along with Eric Dyer as well. Now you come on to Shelby, Livermore and Cook, who with Delph's inclusion, probably all three of them are, are sort of unlikely to make the plane. Livermore has been what you consider Southgate's uh, main selection out of these three in the last few years. But I don't think with West Brom going down, with Delph's fitness, with certain other players probably looking to put pressure on Gareth to, to be selected, I don't think Livermore is going to make this squad, nor do I think Lewis Cook is a very promising young and upcoming player for Bournemouth, can play in a variety of different areas in central midfield. I don't think he's going to make the plane either. John Joe Shelby, I really, really, really want him to because obviously ex Charlton and also John Joe Shelby is just something that we don't, we don't have a lot of John Joe Shelby's in, in the sort of selection. He, he's a passer. He's been very, very good and solid for Newcastle over the last sort of four or five even six months, and he's really got him out of trouble with some of his creativity, his passing. He will be very unlucky to miss out, but I do think he is just about going to miss out. And another player I do want to bring up is James Milner, who, in my opinion, would be an unbelievable selection, but unfortunately, he is retired technically from England after that exit from the Euros to Iceland he decided to retire so James Milner the top Champions League assister this season I would love him in the squad I would love him probably ahead of Delft because he also offers that versatility at left back obviously played a whole season there last year for Liverpool and probably is a better player than Delft but he's right footed um, he can also offer a bit more versatility maybe like a right back right midfield James Milner would be lovely but I don't think he is going to come out of retirement if he was available I would definitely predict him to be in there, but as it is, I don't think he will be, which is unfortunate for England. Now we move on to the second bracket of midfielders, more of the attacking midfielders, you'll probably say. And if you look at this uh, contention list here, I would say it's from Wiltshire, number 24, through to Jesse Lingard. And I think only one of these players is going to miss out. Who that player will be, I'm not sure. I think it'll be one of Wiltshire or Lalana. 
purely based on the fact that neither of them have been 100% fit throughout the season. I think that Lalana is probably more likely to be in with a shout because right now, as I recall this video, he is a little bit further ahead with his fitness, I think. And also, he offers something a little bit maybe different to any other midfielder. He's quite tricky, dancey, and also aggressive in the midfield. So Lalana does get a seat on the plane for me, as well as Loftus-Cheek, Deli Alley and Jesse Lingard. All three of those will get on the plane in my opinion. Loftus-Cheek obviously coming into some great form after his injury with Crystal Palace, can play right mid, centre mid in a variety of different areas, sort of more attacking, a little bit more deep. He is a very good player. Young, promising, upcoming. We'll return to Chelsea as well at the end of the season. So yeah, I think Loftus-Cheek gets on the plane. Obviously Ali, I don't think much conversation needs to be had. He's a great player, great young talent. And I think he's pretty much nailed on Sir for Gareth Southgate's plain selection. And I do think that Jesse Lingard as well will be in the squad after some very, very decent form over the course of the season with Manchester United. Great finisher as well, can pick up passes and shots from long range. So yeah, he'll be on. And it will be then Jack Wiltshire who just misses out for me, which will be unfortunate for Jack. But again, he just can't quite keep fit enough in these times. But I wouldn't be surprised to see him on there. But for me, I think Lalana just gets it ahead of him. Now we move on to the sort of attackers slash wingers bracket, which I'm considering is Raheem Sterling through to Marcus Rashford. Now I do think Raheem Sterling is probably one of the first names on the team sheet and on the on the 23-man squad here. He's had a fantastic season. I think fourth or fifth top scorer in the Premier League full of assists, full of goals, needs to maybe a tiny bit work on his finishing, but the amount of chances that he creates, he is vital for England's plans in this tournament. So Sterling gets on my plane. Welbeck then, uh, definitely a conversation to be had there. Is he a good enough finisher? Is he consistent enough for Arsenal? Probably not, but his England record alone is fantastic. And so I think that Danny Welbeck, as well as his sort of versatility at left wing, I think he gets on that plane. So Danny Welbeck also grabs a seat for me. And also Marcus Rashford scored on his last on the last game of the season for Manchester United in a 1-0 victory. I think Marcus Rashford is literally our upcoming world-class talent. And so Marcus Rashford for me absolutely needs the tournament experience. I think he'll get game time. It's between him and Sterling to start alongside Kane. Probably edging a little bit towards Sterling. But I think Rashford is definitely a huge part of the plans. And so he makes the plane for me. And finally then we move on to the strikers, the out and out strikers. I know Welbeck and Rashford technically are, but they can also play on the wing. These four though, Defoe, Vardy, Sturridge and Kane are out and out goal scoring strikers. Now, Jermaine Defoe, I think he's 34 years old, a lot of England experience, never quite completely fulfilled his potential at international level, has scored at a World Cup though, but I don't think he quite makes the plane for me just because he hasn't had a really prolific season. But we know what Jermaine Defoe's about. We know what he can do. So he may be on the standby list or something like that. But for now, I'm going to go for the last two places. The first one's going to go to Jamie Vardy. And then I believe that it's pretty much no contest between Kane and Sturridge. Obviously, Sturridge is a fantastic player. Really, really can play at a world-class level when he's fit. But when he's fit is not often, to be perfectly honest. And he kind of ruined his second half of the season with a loan spell to West Brom where he's only played five games. He's had injury problems. He hasn't scored for them and he's been coming off the bench. So Sturridge, I can't see any realistic chance of him getting on the plane. Would be unfortunate for him. He's had a couple of seasons that are just stop start because of his injury problems, really. And so Harry Kane, of course, gets that final spot on the plane. Pretty much our best player world-class striker has had three or four now I'm not sure consecutive seasons of of sort of 30-ish goals in a Premier League campaign he's absolutely world-class and I think that we cannot he, he's pretty much the first name on this plane at the moment because he is our savior really he's going to be the reason that England get to the latter stages of the tournament with his goals if we do so so there we go. There you have it. That is my 23-man squad for the World Cup and what I predict Gareth Southgate to go with. Now, if it was my choice, if this was my opinion rather than a prediction, I would probably swap Delph for Milner. I might even swap Maguire or Tarkovsky for someone like Smallin and potentially as well Joe Hart over one of the less experienced goalkeepers just to bring a little bit more sort of just know-how and tournament experience and calming the nerves and that kind of stuff for the other two keepers. But yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with that if that was to be the selection. I'll make another video on how my prediction fared against the actual prediction or the actual sort of announcement that Gareth Southgate has gone with 
that will come either tomorrow or the next day. But for now, that is my 23-man squad prediction for England's World Cup campaign. Like I said, I am going to compare it. And right now as well, I am going to compare this to a squad that I made back in July. A prediction that I made way before any sort of the season even took place. It was before... A ball had been kicked in the Premier League and it was just a prediction on who I thought would have a good season. So let's pull that up right now and see what we did predict. So here it is and I'm not too displeased with some of my predictions here. Obviously Wayne Rooney retired, that's the first thing you notice. Daniel Sturridge fell out of favour through injury and stuff so that's two players. Redmond didn't have anywhere near a good enough season to be in contention for England. Oxlade-Chamberlain I think would have been in the squad over probably Loftus-Cheek but he obviously got injured. Loftus-Cheek I actually did predict over it just about a year ago which was for me at the time a complete wild card. I just tipped him to have a good season and that probably has come to fruition. I do expect him to be in that squad tomorrow. And then we've got players like Smallin, Michael Keane who I expected to be in there as well as Fraser Forster who at the time was, and Gary Cahill as well, uh, but at the time Forster was one of the keepers in contention. But I'm not entirely displeased with that. I don't think it's going to be too far from this. And I think I've done a pretty good job, maybe other than like Redmond and not predicting Rooney's retirement. But yeah, it wasn't too far off. But anyway, that is going to be it for this video, guys. Like I said, I will be coming in the next maybe two, one or two days to react to how mine compared to Gareth's. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you're going to stick around and click that subscribe button down below if you want to see more World Cup coverage and England stuff and all that kind of good stuff. But yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Take care and sweet.